be clean in Messiah. Um, my father was raised in a poor family in Brooklyn. And, you know, he told stories about when he was younger. And uh, one of the things he said is, you know, it was so un it was so dirty and um, he he didn't even have clean undergarments and he despised the poverty but it wasn't and you know we used to joke about it because in the bathroom my parents bathroom there was tons of powder he used to powder himself because you know he, he so much remembered when he was a child being unclean but it, ha it wasn't a sad story because he became a successful businessman. Um, so today we're talking about cleansing. Um, in this week's Parsha, it starts out talking about uncleanness uh, when a woman gives birth. Um, and it talks about rep leprosy. Um, now... The uh, the priests in the tabernacle, the tabernacle had a bronze basin in it filled with water. And the Kohanim had to uh, be cleansed before they went into the tabernacle. Um, and it says this in many places um, in the Torah. So water can be holy... Um, because it represents spiritual cleansing from inside of us. And the Talmud also spent a lot of time talking about water, water immersion and water cleansing. Be clean in Messiah. Now, referring to the laws of Kashrut, this is in Leviticus 11, verse 47, it says its purpose is to distinguish between the unclean and the clean, between the creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. So we see this talks about the physical and the spiritual because uh, food goes inside of us. As it says in Matthew 4.4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Uh, so we see the emphasis upon the spiritual. Um, uh, but the body is uh, largely water. And in Leviticus 13.55, it talks about leprosy that's in the clothing. And whether the leprosy is outside uh, whether it says that it uh, will be it will be um, not clean uh, so cleanliness cleanliness does have its place um, uh, in third world countries in uh, some villages they don't have water and they, they have to walk miles and miles to get a bucket of water to bring back to the village. But there are charities that go to these third world, these villages in third world countries, and they build a water pump coming from the underwater currents uh, beneath the ground. And they make the water pump. And to these villages, um, that is gold to them. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if they also used the water pump for cleansing. And it must have been a great feeling to be able to wash and to cool down uh, from that water pump. Uh, in Leviticus 12, it talks about the uncleanness that happens in birth, whether it be a boy or a girl. Um, interestingly, we also have clean. We we uh, when we have a new birth, 
we become pure through the Holy Spirit. As it says in Titus 3.5, it talks about the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. Be clean in Messiah. And uh, it also, referring to the beginning of the nation of Israel, they came out from the land of Egypt, and then they came through the Red Sea. So it was as if the whole nation went through an immersion. And then Joshua led the Israelites uh, through the Jordan River to the Promised Land. Again, we see, uh, in a sense, an immersion through water. And in Ezekiel 36, 24 through 27, uh, it talks about, uh, also it talks about clean, cleanness. I will, I, will, I will put water upon you. Uh, and it it's, connects this to return, to the return of Israel to the promised land uh, after they had been um, uh, in the diaspora for thousands of years. When they came back to Israel, it was called a cleansing. Uh, and then also in Ezekiel, it says, I will put a new spirit inside you. Uh, and we see the connection between uh, cleansing and the new birth, and the birth of the Spirit. Um, now, let's talk about immersion and Judaism. As I said, the Talmud talks a lot about water cleansing. Um, now, uh, in, this, in this day, in modern history... Um, Christians, uh, you know, did, uh, especially evangelistic Christians, did a lot of evangelism. Uh, but back in the time of Yeshua, and, and also preceding Yeshua, uh, Israel uh, was an evangelistic uh, faith. They would go out and they would bring converts to Judaism, as it says in the book of Acts, um, in the beginning of the book of Acts, it says that the, the Jews were gathered, this is for Shavuot, that the Jews were gathered in Jerusalem. It says converts, uh, uh, regu regular Jews and converts. Uh, that was a time of conversion. Now, um, interestingly, um, the ritual after a person, if a person wanted to convert at that time to Judaism, it would they went through the waters of cleansing. So at that time, uh, it wasn't that uh, like today. Some people think that a Jew would become a Christian and they would convert, but back then it was when a Gentile uh, converts they join the house of Israel as a proselyte. Um, back to the, the time of Yeshua with the Qumran community uh, and the Dead Sea Scrolls, it talks about the immersion as a, a death and resurrection. Um, another Jewish writing compares the water immersion to being in the womb and re-emerging like a new birth. Wow, those, uh, those ancient new Jews really uh, knew what was going on. Uh, and even today, um, there are Jewish people uh, during the High Holidays. The High Holidays, of course, is the holiest time of the year. And there are some Jewish people that go through the waters of cleansing. Uh, now it's called a mikvah, uh, and they they do it as a sign of repentance and inner cleansing. Be clean in Messiah and the new covenant. It says in Ephesians five twenty six. It talks about the washing of water by the word. 
And in John 15, 3, Yeshua said, Now you are clean through the word I have spoken to you. Do you, do you want to be clean? Um, read the word of God. Immerse yourself in the word of God. As it says in Psalm 19, The law of the Lord is perfect restoring the soul um when i was a kid and uh actually longer than just a kid we belonged to a club and in the club was a swimming pool and i remember uh swimming in the pool for hours virtually all day and i remember uh shivering when i came out shivering um and with blue with purple lips and I remember what a joy that was as a kid uh, and I look back on it that in a sense it was like a cleansing to me um, okay now this week's Parsha talks about cleansing uh, and healing uh, the connection between the two uh, one of Yeshua's greatest ministries was healing he brought healing and cleansing to Israel, including lepers. Um, and after Yeshua had ascended, tens of th it says in the book of Acts that tens of thousands of Jews came to believe in Yeshua. So Yeshua brought cleansing and salvation to Israel. Um, now, Let's talk a little bit about John the Immerser. As Yeshua said, no man has risen greater than John the Immerser. And his practice, his biggest practice, was uh, immersion. Now, immersion at the time of Yeshua and John the Immerser, it had evolved out of the holy practice of water cleansing in the tabernacle from the priests, from the Kohanim. And uh, both parents of John the Immerser were Kohanim. So John the Immerser was a Kohen, and he practiced water immersion. Be cleansed in Messiah. Now let's talk uh, a, a little bit about Loshin Hora, which in Hebrew means evil speaking. Uh, now, at some point uh, with Moses, um, Aaron, his brother, and Miriam, his sister, uh, Moses had married a Cushite woman, and Miriam and Aaron spoke badly about Moses. And it was so serious that God struck Miriam with leprosy. Um, and then, uh, um, then God was, had compassion uh, and healed Miriam of her leprosy. But we must be very careful what we say. Are we, are we being very careful what we say? Are we speaking words of life and holiness? We must be very careful about what we say. In Mark 7, 14, Yeshua said, There is nothing outside of a person which by going into him can make him unclean. Rather, it is the things that come out of a person which make him unclean. Sounds like bad news? But there's good news. There's always good news. Yeshua said, He who believes in me, out of his innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. Um, when I was a young man, uh, I, I was in the Adirondack Mountains. I was on a trip to the Adirondack Mountains. And there was a swimming hole, like a creek. And if I remember correctly, it was a beautiful sunny day in the summer. And I remember the beauty of that creek, that, that swimming hole. And there were rocks 
uh, and there were some people gathering. Um, and uh, I probably went swimming. It might have been cold because it was up north. But uh, if I remember correctly, people were swimming. And it was one of the most beautiful memories uh, at that time of my life. Be clean in Messiah. Now, uh, John the Immerser, when he saw Yeshua, you know, said, uh, you know, come and be immersed. But Yeshua said no. He insisted on being immersed himself by John the Immerser. And this was in the Jordan River. Um, and it says uh, that the Holy Spirit came down uh, as Yeshua was being immersed, the Holy Spirit came down upon him. Uh, you see, Yeshua uh, wanted to be an example to us that we too, uh, Yeshua as the Son of Man, that we too should uh, practice uh, the ritual of water cleansing. Um, and then in Romans chapter 6, 3 through 5, uh, in the New Covenant, it says, Don't you know that those of us who have been immersed into the Messiah Yeshua have been immersed into his death? Through immersion into his death, we were buried with him, so that just as through the glory of the Father, the Messiah was raised from the dead, likewise we too might have new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Now, uh, I want to end on heaven. In Re Revelations 22.1 Next, the angel showed me the river uh, of the water of life sparkling like crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb um, and I believe when we get to heaven uh, we will remember what it was like to be unclean because of uh, the sin of Adam and Eve we were born into uncleanness and we were reborn into cleansing from the Holy Spirit. And when we get to heaven uh, and we, we see the river of life, we will remember uh, what we were like before. And heaven will be a place, it says in Revelations, that heaven will be a place of perfect purity and nothing. No thing unclean. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.